For a long time, K-pop is no longer just about music. It has become a market and even an industry where idols sell their talent and popularity for profit. The holding companies, which act as the investors, therefore, do not want to invest money without any return. To guarantee their revenue, K-pop companies will focus more on prioritizing their popular idols, while those with less reputation will be given a cold shoulder. In this video, we're gonna talk about four K-pop idols who, despite great talent and vision, Visuals are still neglected by their own companies. Number 1. Chaehyun Kepler Winning the first place in survival show Girl Planet 999, as well as the opportunity to debut as the official center of Kepler, Chaehyun received high expectations to achieve a great reputation. However, fans were soon disappointed to find out that their idol is barely getting the treatment she deserves from her holding company, Wake One Entertainment. On October 13th, Kepler had a showcase to introduce their third mini-album called Troubleshooter, and they made the first performance on stage for their title song here. However, as soon as the press images of the performance were released, Chaehyun's fans got furious with the way Wake One Entertainment distributed parts for their girls. Despite being introduced as the official center in Kepler's profile, Chaehyun did not get to stand in the prime position in the ending scene, which is an important thing that a center would usually undertake. Instead, Xiao Ting, who finished Girl Planet 999 in the ninth rank as Kepler's visual, took the place. On top of that, Chaehyun's styling for the new comeback also came in for criticism. Since debuting with Kepler, the female idol's hairstyle and makeup look were said to hardly have any changes, making her appearance kinda repetitive and boring. Except for the pink hair in the Wadada era, Chaehyun always shows up with the same straight black hair. For so long, her fans have been demanding Wake One Entertainment to stop giving Chaehyun such an unimpressive and bland styling, which makes it difficult for her to stand out and makes it easier for her to get overshadowed by other members. To add more, Wake One Entertainment also pisses Chaehyun's fans off as they continuously show obvious bias towards Xiao Ting. On almost all Kepler's photo shoots, such as teasers or even the first magazine photo shoot with Days Korea, Chaehyun often lost the center position to Xiao Ting. Though Chaehyun's fans tried not to trigger a dispute, Wake One Entertainment's favor for Xiao Ting on the recent photo concept for the new album acts as the last straw. Some even pointed out that before the latest comeback with We Fresh, Xiao Ting was assigned to stand in the center of six songs, including stages and music videos while Chaehyun only did four times. Times. This is said to be absolutely unacceptable to Chaehyun, the official center of Kepler. They said that if Wake One wanted Xiao Ting to be the center so much, they shouldn't have let Chaehyun win first place in Girls Planet 999 in the first place. Because the lack of recognition of Chaehyun when she was the official center of the group was nothing but a big insult to her. Number 2. Lee Je Ive Although Lija's case might not be as too obvious as Chaehyun's, her fans are still frustrated at her being neglected by her own holding company, Starship Entertainment. Despite being the main vocalist and also the member with the best singing skills of Ive, Lija was said to never be given the opportunity to showcase her ability. In Ive's two latest songs, Lija was among the members getting the least line and was even not assigned to sing the chorus of After Like, while all other members sang at least once. This makes netizens raise questions about whether Starship Entertainment treated their girls according to their reputation. Not only that, fans also pointed out that Liju was also discriminated against regarding the ending fairy. After several weeks of promoting Afterlike, I have showcased their individual charms and stunning visuals through their solo ending fairy videos. However, there was definitely a huge difference among the number of each member's ending fairy. While two most famous girls, Won Young and Yujin, both got seven ending fairy scenes, Rei, Gaul, and Iso each got two to four. Liju was the only one who did not have any solo ending fairy. This is not the first time Lee Jo was left out and poorly treated. Previously, fans were irritated to find out that Lee Jo was the only one who did not have a solo photo shoot following the release of their new single. While Won Young and Esau shot for Mary Claire, Yu Jin had pictures with W Korea, Rei appeared in Arena Home, and Gaul worked with L. Lee Jo did not have an individual photo shoot to promote herself, especially when Starship Entertainment has enough capability to make a deal for their idol. It is worth mentioning that when she first debuted, Liju was among the members who were pushed the most by Starship, thanks to her sweet vocals and a doll-like appearance which is said to be no less impressive than Jen Wan Yang. 
Therefore, the fact that Liju has not been favored as much lately raises suspicions among netizens that it is Liju's weight gain that has made Starship no longer interested in promoting her image, but instead focusing on other members who were believed to have a more eye-catching appearance. At that point, many fans were outraged, saying that if this was true, then Starship would be so trashy, as they discriminate between the girls based on their looks. However, that's just a reasoning of some of Liju's defenders, and we still don't know the real reason behind the restriction on promoting her image. Number 3. Giselle Espa Despite being one of the biggest entertainment companies that greatly contributes to the K-pop industry, SM is constantly criticized for discriminating against foreign idols. This time, the victim is said to be Giselle from Espa. So recently, Espa's fandom has been raising concerns about SM's treatment of Giselle, who was believed to receive little respect from the company. They pointed out that not long after Espa debuted, Giselle appeared with three other members of Espa in the public after their schedule in KSPO Dome. However, she was the only one whose face was blurred by several Korean newspapers. Fans and netizens found it difficult to understand why a member of such a famous girl group like Espa was mistaken for a staff member while many were extremely discontent. SM didn't do anything to fix that. When SBS's official Instagram account posted photos of Espa performing in SBS Gaio Dejon 2020, Giselle was also forgotten. What is worth mentioning is that SBS did not fail to upload the individual photos of the three other members, and Karina and Winter even had two separate posts. However, this is not the last time Giselle was left out. On a show that Espa participated in, the manager of NBC, Giselle was confusingly absent from the thumbnail of the episode on NBC's YouTube. Fans also pointed out that Giselle's scene was even edited out of some other shows, such as her talent showing part on Weekly Idol or her cover part in Knowing Bros. Even when Espa has debuted for almost two years, the unfair treatment of Giselle shows no sign of stopping. If not, it is getting worse as the female idol is now even discriminated against by some brands that her group is currently the ambassador. In particular, MLB was once under fire for allegedly mistreating Giselle when failing to include the female idol in their styling guide. They even misspelled her name writing G-I-E-S-E-L-L-E, -E -L -L -E, Giselle, instead of Giselle, and didn't even upload her individual photo as they did to other members. When shooting for Mediheal, Giselle only had an indoor photo shoot and didn't hold the brand's products. That was a total contrast to the other three members who shooted outside with a specific concept and products in their hands. Even Clio of Japan, the country where Giselle came from, also left the female idol out in their campaign as Giselle's image was nowhere to be found in both Clio Japan's Twitter or Instagram. Not only that, Giselle was even invisible in almost all Espa's promoting videos. In the advertisement for Chopa and Internal Return, Giselle's scenes lasted only one second, and she was even excluded from the videos for Tams. Most recently, fans voiced their frustration with SM Entertainment after Giselle revealed that she had to specifically ask for her Spotify playlist to be included in Espa's profile. Although Espa's official Twitter announced Giselle's playlist on September 1, it was impossible to find her playlist on the official account. Number 4. Yuta NCT 127 Looks like SM is involved in a lot of foreign idol mistreatment cases because Yuta, the Japanese member of NCT, is also a victim of this. Although Yuta's career as a soloist is on the rise with numerous important activities, SM appears indifferent and fails to promote them. To be specific, Yuta has had a full busy year of individual activities in Japan, including multiple high-profile magazine shoots, shows, brand collaborations, and more. There was a collaboration between Yuta and Kraft Boss and Tom Ford. Plus, his show Yuta at Home also started a limited-time collaboration with Disney+, Plus and released its own merchandise. Not to stop there, Yuta was even cast in a major Japanese blockbuster, High and Low, which means he's going to make his debut as a full-fledged action star this year. However, despite Yuta's hard work, SM Entertainment failed to promote his activities. On the official Instagram account of NCT, Yuta was the only one who hardly had a post about his solo projects. The male idol did not even get a highlight for himself, no matter how big his gigs are. 
Additionally, on NCT 127's comeback with Sticker, SM was again slammed for erasing Yuta out of their promotional materials. While all other members have beautiful solo thumbnails for themselves, only the thumbnail of Yuta did not focus on his face but his legs, and the male idol was seemingly omitted from face cams and ending fairy scenes. Fans also pointed out that on NCT 127's Japan Dome Tour, Neo City Japan The Link, Yuta was inexplicably forgotten again. Specifically, near the end of the concert, all NCT's members were raising their light stick and waving goodbye to the audience. And while each member received a close-up shot, Yuta didn't and just stood quietly on his own. To this point, fans cannot understand why SM showed such a great neglect to Yuta while he was proven himself to be extremely popular. In a research about the most popular idol in Japan, Yuta ranked first and even occupied 45.68% of the vote. He was also the one who had an instrumental contribution to SM Entertainment's financial recovery in Japan, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic. With such a huge impact and great profitability, the fact that Yuta is still ignored by his holding company makes fans extremely confused and frustrated. So which of the above cases do you think is really serious and which is just an exaggeration of fans from being overly worried about their idols? Comment down below to share your thoughts with us. Also, remember to like, share, and subscribe to Be Boss TV for more interesting K-pop content. Thank you for watching!